It's the morning star drive on 17.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know Hey guys, how's it going? It's Friday, May 21st, and this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is going on today on this fabulous Friday? We got some coronavirus updates, current news from around the world, a word study on the Wednesday message, and then back to the MBTI segment with Wan Chun. So guys, how are you today? It is Friday. It is fabulous. Yes, it is time for another time of rest and it's kind of like uh, the Wednesday message saying that you know you got to rest when it's the night right and it's not literally meaning the night it means that when the when you know when the work is done and Saturday and Sunday are days for rest rest from our work and we could do other stuff that we really want to do which includes doing the work of this history yes we're looking forward to um a wonderful Saturday because we're going to rest, relaxation, you know, hang out with the family or whatever it is, have fun. But also Sunday, we're looking forward to another message to give us new direction for the week, right? So let's get things kicked off here together on the Morning Star Drive. Keep liking and commenting. Want to hear from you guys, see how you're doing. Um, post your song requests, questions, stories, new segments, whatever you guys want. And oh yeah, guys, super sorry about yesterday's um, uh, seg- yesterday's podcast. Uh, one of the sections, I'm not sure why it was so staticky on the word study. That is my fault. I should have double checked that one. So I will make sure today's is awesome. Uh, also, Espresso with Sky channel has a new video coming out tonight. So go ahead and check that one out. And remember this Sunday edition, we're going to meet another member from America. It's Andrew Chow, the other half of the Somni boys we met mike jr several weeks ago but this is a really good interview too you guys are going to love it uh some new insight on his life he is a blessed family now so yeah it's, it's crazy like he's blessed family which is like really mind-blowing for me too because uh, i've known him since he was so young but i'm really hoping you guys really enjoy these sunday edition interviews getting to meet each other in an intimate way and see what different members have gone through in their lives before and after coming to this history and also kind of being inspired because we know that uh, a lot of us go through similar things Now, uh, also, lots of new videos coming out on Patreon each and every week. I think another one's coming today. Uh, It's going to be Lecturer's Q&A, and we basically go over the Sunday message and make uh, educations out of them. Either way, so let's get into today's uh, music, right? Today's music from the member artists from around the world. Let's uh, take a look at who's today's featured artist. It is Mariah Henry, all right? Mariah Henry from America. Uh, she's had this album for a while, really, really hoping she got new stuff coming out. Uh, great song, though. Uh, it's kind of one of those summer songs. I really like this song, and uh, I like it. I want to have today to be a little bit more fun and exciting. So I picked three songs that are like kind of upbeat, and I think a lot of us will just really feel good after these three songs. The first one's going to be Paradise from Mariah Henry, and then we'll go to Die Wings from Korea with Round and Round, and last but not least, it's Kumachang from Japan with open my eyes. All right, guys. So let's make sure that we keep all of them in our prayers so uh, that they can kind of catch that big break so they can spread the gospel through uh, the music inspired by the word. Fine, the temperature 
is cool Seven on earth cause I'm with you Ain't nothing better when we live forever When we make sense to be one true love Birds of a feather flock together And it's just like that Give you my love cause I don't hold back Call me your love cause I know you got stacks This love is real cause we got it like that Sandy walks on the beach summertime Feel the heat, that's a love paradise Holding hands, cool breeze, cloud nine Make heaven together with you and I Sandy walks on the beach summertime Feel the heat, that's a love paradise Holding hands, cool breeze, cloud nine Make heaven together with you and I hey. You wanna live with happiness and hope You gotta live with the one you love the most And don't forget that even on darkest roads Just by the Lord And grab your heart Control your tears A pretty paradise right from the start oh, oh. Paradise All the night brings darkness You're like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright And I can't wait to see you Cause you are my only paradise Paradise. All the night brings darkness. You're like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my only paradise. Together we're the greatest, just like the moon and the stars. We light the night. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my only paradise. All the night brings darkness. You're like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my only paradise.
揺れないでこうどんなかな吐くぐらいが来てもうどうじない強い信仰を持って立ち向かおうファミリーでゴーファミリーでゴー全ての人を受け入れられる家族のような温かさを持って行こう主の御心ファーストで行こういつも主の心情をと共に主の言葉を最優先にして動き出そう「見たこと実践し挑戦して」「ナンバーワンを目指してゆこう」「すべての個性一切の生かし」「挑戦しよう」「主役になろう」「伝えたい」「I'm happy, I'm happy, 新しく」「ユーサイニーユーサイニー伝えたい」オープンでこうオープンでこう地域や社会の目線に立ち発展に積極的に貢献しよう近づいてこう近づいてこう全ての世代と距離を近く親しく接したのらは僕をなそう縛られてる心を捨ててこう新しい取り組みをしよう主の言葉で心を燃やして動き出そうどんどんチャレンジしよう家族のような温かさで愛に満ちた教会しよう CGM オープンの先駆者として大胆になろう伝えたい I'm happy, I'm happy, 新しく You are signing, you are signing 伝えたい I'm happy, I'm happy, 新しく You are signing, you are signing 主の御言葉に出会い全て与えられた何もない私だったけど Kuma Chung from Japan with Open My Eyes, Dai Wings from Korea, Round and Round, and the feature artist of the day is Mariah Henry from America with Paradise. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. That was a really fun set、uh, kind of to end off this week, and I hope you、uh, guys kind of get、uh, your heart kind of heartbeat moving up and we get more energy to finish off this wonderful Friday. All right, so let's start off with some、uh, updates and news going on around the world. What's going on? We have the coronavirus updates first in the world 165.3 million cases, 3.4 million deaths. At 2.07% mortality rate. Top five countries going by daily infection rates. We have the US with 33.7 million cases, 601,000 deaths at 1.78%. India, 25.7 million cases, 287,000 deaths at 1.11%. Brazil, 15.7 million cases, 439,000 deaths at 2.79%. France comes into the mix with 5.9 million cases, 108,000 deaths at 1.83%. And then Argentina rounds up the top five with 3.3 million cases, 71,000 deaths at 2.13%. Sweden, one of the only countries not going into full lockdown. Down. Their mortality rate is down 0.01% to 1.36%. And Belgium remains steady at 2.39%. And they used to be over 16% for their mortality rate. All right, now let's take a look at daily infection rates. Now, daily infection rates are like、uh, the things that everyone's looking at these days.、Uh, India. 
uh, at one point over 400,000. I think that, that was like a week ago. Now they're down to 267,000 cases in a day. Brazil doubles their uh, doubles their cases from yesterday with 74,000 cases. Argentina, 35. The U.S. remains in fourth for a second straight day with only 27,000 cases in a day. And then France with 17,000 cases. Over here in Southeast Asia, a lot of craziness going on. Uh, there's a new number one, and it's it's uh, Malaysia. They have over 6,000 cases in a single day. That's where I am right now, which means we're expecting some more lockdown going down, right? And we're going to be stuck in our homes for a little bit longer, I believe. Uh, then the Philippines with 44, and then India with 4,100 cases in a day. So let's go into... Um, Top three news items for today. And we're going to go back to Israel. And this is kind of uh, some good news. Even though the rockets are being fired every single day right now, uh, an, an actual Hamas official predicts a ceasefire within a day or two, which is great news. So a senior Hamas official has said that he expects Israel and Gaza militants to reach a ceasefire within a day or two as cross-border attacks continue. But, but Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Wednesday he was determined to carry on until common security are restored to Israeli citizens. So there were uh, more than 100 Israeli airstrikes on Hamas infrastructure in the north of Gaza just on on early Thursday, right? Palestinian militants retaliated with rocket fire at targets in Israel and the Gaza, and you guys got to know, the Gaza fighting began after weeks of rising Israeli-Palestinian tension in occupied East Jerusalem that culminated in clashes at a holy site revered by both Muslims and Jews. Now Hamas, which controls Gaza, began firing rockets after warning Israel to withdraw from the site, triggering retaliatory airstrikes. Now, at least 227 people, including more than 100 women and children, have been killed in Gaza so far, according to its health ministry. And Israel has said at least 150 militants are among those killed in Gaza. But Hamas, is uh, they do not give casualty figures for fighters. Right now, in Israel, 12 people, including two children, have been killed, its medical service says. And Israel says some 4,000 rockets have been fired towards its territory by militants in Gaza. So what did the Hamas officials say? He said, quote unquote, I think that the ongoing efforts regarding the ceasefire will succeed. And he also said, I expect a ceasefire to be reached within a day or two, and the ceasefire will be on the basis of mutual agreement. And this is from the Hamas political official, uh, Musa Abu Marzouk. Right. So the comments come as international pressure mounts on Israel and the Palestinian militants to end hostilities. An Egyptian security source told the Reuters news agency that the two sides had agreed in principle to a ceasefire after assistance from mediators, but negotiations were still taking place. So, you know, even on Wednesday, it was President Biden. Uh, he had his fourth call with Mr. Netanyahu since the conflict started. And in a statement released by the White House, uh, they said the president conveyed to the prime minister that he expected a significant de-escalation today on the path to a ceasefire, right? Uh, also, the latest bid for a UN Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire launched by France failed on Wednesday when the U.S. said it could undermine efforts to de-escalate. So, uh, you know, basically on the ground, fighting has shown little sign of letting up overnight. And Israel launched a series of airstrikes on Gaza in the early hours of Thursday, destroying two houses. And medics said four people were injured in an airstrike on the town of Khan Yunis, right? So that is what's going on. hope that we can really be able to pray that uh, the situation gets much better as uh, this war is, uh, it seems like a war is ensuing, right? Uh, second thing, we're going to go over to Colombia as there's mass demonstrations reflecting a deep national crisis. So protesters are taking to the streets for a fourth week, demanding government action on poverty police violence and other issues so anti-government protests have stretched into their fourth week in Colombia student groups unions and others took to the streets again on Wednesday to demand social change amid continuing talks between the government and strike leaders uh, during this protest about 8,000 people attended in the capital Bogota the mayor's office said and they said um there's a lawyer named Roberto Hermida, 68 years old, told the Reuters news agency that they're accompanying young children, uh, young people, children, grandchildren who still lack opportunities despite the f despite for fighting so long. And Hermida said he wanted to provide more educational opportunities and better health care. So the protest began last month after right wing Colombian president Ivan Duque's government introduced a tax reform that critics said would disproportionately harm the working and middle classes already hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, 
Duque withdrew the proposal, but the demonstrations have continued as protesters expanded their list of demands to include the withdrawal of a proposed health reform, an end to widespread violence in the country, and steps to address economic inequality. So, the protests have been marked by violence, but the exact death toll still remains unclear. The Attorney General's office has confirmed 15 deaths, while one human rights group says the tally is at more than 40. So, Duque has blamed armed groups for most of the violence, but the United Nations and several rights, uh, several rights groups have condemned Colombian police for opening fire on protesters. Now, on Wednesday... The former president and Nobel Peace Prize winner Juan Manuel Santos urged President Duque to assume responsibility for abuses committed by the police and basically saying, look, people, you know, the government needs to say that there was police abuse and they have to fess up to it and then people can kind of move on to the talks, right? So the National Strike Committee made up of major unions, student groups and others has held several discussions with government representatives about the protesters' demands, but the two sides are not yet holding formal talks, right? So they they are expected to meet again uh, today, right? So it'll be, well, I'll be Thursday over there, but it'll be Friday over here in Asia, right? So let's let's just see what happens and oh, let's hope that, uh, you know, this is this is all happening while a pandemic has killed more than 82,000 people in Colombia also. So uh, it's something that I think we all have to look at a little bit more carefully and deeply. Uh, last but not least, we're going to go over to uh, America and Korea and what's happening over there. Uh, let's see. So the president, President Moon, Right, President Moon uh, is in the U.S. to hold a summit with President Biden on vaccines and North Korea. So, so South Korean President Moon Jae-in arrived in the United States on Wednesday for summit talks with President Joe Biden on the coronavirus vaccine cooperation, North Korea, alliance issues, and bilateral economic partnerships. So he's scheduled to hold the sessions at the White House on Friday afternoon local time, which is going to be Saturday or Friday evening for us, and it will mark their first face-to-face -face meeting and the two plan to announce the results of their talks in an ensuing joint press conference. Now, the summit is expected to set the tone for overall relations between the allies during the remainder of Moon's presidency to end in May 2022. Now, Moon said he has high expectations for his first overseas trip since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, and uh, coronavirus cases are stabilizing in the U.S. thanks to its swift vaccinations, and that is giving hope to the world with speedy economic recovery. Now, the envoy replied that Biden is greatly looking forward to having a summit with Moon, according to Chung Wa De spokesperson uh, Park Kyung Mi, and Moon hopes for an accomplishment in discussions on vaccines. So basically, this trip to the U.S. is going to be an opportunity to strengthen cooperation on the vaccines, also move towards the goal of becoming a global hub for vaccine production, uh, and hopefully uh, it's going to talk about North Korea and how they're going to deal with it and is he going to continue with what uh, Biden's predecessor, Donald Trump, did with uh, the summit talks in uh, Singapore? So that's something that everyone is kind of looking forward to because that's a key, another key topic. It's not just vaccines. North Korea is a key topic for President Moon. Now, uh, observers are paying attention to whether Moon will secure Biden's commitment to inheriting this 2018 Singapore agreement with uh, that was done with Donald Trump. So that's what everyone's kind of looking at to see if that's going to happen or not, right? So there is a lot of optimism on the Korean side, and let's just hope that everything works out really well as they have their summit talks starting today. All right, guys. So that is the top three uh, news items for today. Hope this is something that uh, a lot of you guys will be able to kind of look at and say, oh, this is, a, this is what's happening over there in the world. But this also means that it's time for something a little bit more spiritual more than anything else. So let's move on to some spiritual topics. We'll start with some praise and worship. We'll start with life of heaven, level up, and then I believe. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. Life of heaven
there you go. That was I Believe. Yes, old school, old school song, but I really, really enjoyed that song. Uh, before that was Level Up and, of course, Life of Heaven. All right, guys, so let's get into some word study for today. Uh, it is Friday, but we're going to go over the Wednesday message. I usually do these on Thursday. Well, in the past, not usually. In the past, like way in the beginning. Uh, I used to do these on uh, Thursdays, but it's, it was really tough because that means I was recording after you know, after the Wednesday message, which means that it's like 9.30, 10 p.m. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I'll be sitting there for hours recording. Uh, so I did give myself a break and do these on Fridays. But I think it's good because um, we get a double whammy today because we get also the pre-dawn message and then we get a review on the Wednesday, which kind of brings, brings things more into perspective. All right, guys, so what was the Wednesday, the mes Wednesday message? Great message once again. A uh, bunch of different things that I realized from it and things that I really uh, want to talk about today uh i like the first point that kind of sets the the sets the feeling for the rest of the mess when he said doesn't work feel like tribulation and it's true because work is not an easy thing if you're in a labor job even if you're like sitting at a desk there's like mental stress physical stress it's like work feels like tribulation but then he said that but on the flip side which is like so crazy is if you suffer when you do nothing Right? Isn't that true? Like when you're doing nothing, you're like, oh, I'm so bored. I got to do something. Like I know there's so many times, especially during this pan at the beginning of this pandemic, when you're stuck at home and you can't go out, you can't do certain things. You're like, whoa, I miss driving. Whoa, I miss like just going to a cafe. I miss like there's so many different things that I missed and having that freedom to go out. And But you realize it takes that much time. It does. It takes a lot of time. And you realize that a lot of your day is taken up by things that are not really, like, they're not super important. It's like driving or this or that. And it's like, oh, they only have to do this because I have to get to a certain destination. But, yeah, you realize that you suffer when you have nothing to do. And I think this is why people start getting into, like, uh, media and games and stuff like that. Because there's nothing to do and you got to fill that time up because you're so bored, Right. So I do agree. If you suffer when you don't do anything, but works feel, work feels like tribulation. So what's you know what do we have to do? And of course the 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 best message is you have to enjoy your work, and it no longer becomes tribulation. So all of us you know work at the right time, as Sunseem said. The right time. I talked a little bit uh, a bit about this at the beginning. It says it says break at night, but you can also have naps during the day. Right? So what does that mean? Breaking at night doesn't necessarily mean literally at nighttime. It just basically means night means when everything finishes, when the day finishes, which also means like, at the, you know, the weekend is kind of the night for the week because on, on Friday night and Saturday, all your work that you need to do is done and you have your break, which is Friday night, Saturday, and then Sunday. And that is the night of the week. The night of the day is obviously in the evening time. But when it comes to work, there is a night in your work. Right? So there are some projects where you cannot finish them in one day or one week or one month, but it doesn't mean you're working 24-7 for one month. You have your breaks, right? You have a certain project, certain thing you need to get done by a certain time. Once you finish it, take a break, right? So it's kind of like when it comes to work is when the things finish for that time. Because even if you look at what I'm doing, it takes like he talks about doing it for 30 years. You, there's no way you'd be able to do it in 30 years. Like, you know, there's no way you could do it in a day. Right? There's so much work to be done. That's why you do your work for the day and you're done and you break. Right? Or you have your project, you're done, take a quick take a quick break and then go back to work again. Right? So I hope that's something that we can keep in our minds too. And uh, uh, you know, doing the work, the spiritual work of this history, it's a really interesting topic because uh, spiritual work can be done directly and indirectly. Right? For instance, you can have uh, direct work in evangelism, which is like, you know, you're the one going out meeting people, you're the one lecturing, you're the one just meeting these people and, and, and managing them. Like, these are direct things you can do. But then there are indirect things that you can do for evangelism. For instance, imagine you're the one that buys the dinner for the buys a dinner for the newcomer with, uh, with the manager so they can have a time together, right? That's an indirect, but you are helping in evangelism. What about if you're the one uh, that, you know, lends the car or pays for, pays for transportation? Or you're the one, uh, you know, like put it this way, guys. What about if you're the one that, that's part of buying the church where there's a place to go? 
place to have service, a place to, you know, a place to meet the newcomer and teach, right? A place where there's a good atmosphere. What if you're the one that is the atmosphere maker, but you can't go out because you're not a student, you don't have that much time, but whenever you're there, you make it really fun and exciting. There are so many things you can do indirectly for evangelism right? And we need to do the work that best fits the time period, the things that are going to last for a thousand years, right? So that's why even a lot of us here, we're not, we can't work in Wonmingdong, but we can donate to Wonmingdong, right? We can send people from our churches to Wonmingdong. We can support someone from our church to work in Wonmingdong. Like there's so many things that we can do, things that will last directly or indirectly. Because if it's only direct, then the people who are working in families they're the ones that are in a bad position because they can't really do, they don't have the time to do those things. So we have to always be thinking about putting the work in both directly and indirectly. Um, this part really kind of hit me. Hit, hitting me meaning like, it made me think about myself too, is when, you know, this Sunsim says, there are some people who are supposed to do God's work, but they're not doing it. It's because they're lazy. And I'm like, wow, is that me? Because, you, know, you know, in my head, I'm going back to the old thinking of, uh, Providence work is me doing a, a head leader or it's being like, you know, it's like headquarters or all these other different things. But I thought to myself, no, because there's tons of ways to do God's work without being a head leader. Tons of work doing God's work without being a, in headquarters or whatever it is, right? Or even being a, an AL or a department leader. There's lots of ways to do God's work, right? So the, the big issue is going to be what is the work that God has planned for you? And that's kind of the bigger issue that we have to think about. Uh, I, I really like the, that when, when Sassi talked about those people who, who saw Wo Dong in the past, were inspired by Wo Dong, and they started to develop and do big things. Like that is inspiring to know that people recognize the value of it, just face value. It's not those crazy people who are going to look at something as good or bad depending on the person, like saying, oh my gosh, we think this is a bad person, so everything they do is terrible. But these people are looking at it at face value saying, this is amazing. This woman doing place is crazy amazing. And we have to know that uh, it's like even making God's temple, like this is the pride of providence. That's, that's what I'm saying, right? And it's interesting because even though it's the pride of providence, it is purely physical work, right? Of course, Sunsim does it together with the Holy Spirit, so it becomes a spiritual work. And so, but it's it's an indirect spiritual work, right? But it is work itself. It's not a spiritual thing like evangelizing, praising God, doing all these different things, but it's actually doing it indirectly, praising God by building something, you know, giving glory to God by building something, building God's house. But it's a lot of physical labor. It's for the future. It's a historical thing. But it, it's so it's something that is physical labor, like an actual working thing, but it's so it makes God so happy that even if he's angry or upset and wants to rebuke, if you bring it up, he'll be he'll start smiling again. That's what Sunsim said, right? That's how and that's physical labor, guys. Which means it, it makes it is it has to change the way you think about physical labor or doing work that's not like quote unquote spiritual, right? We have to think about that. Right? What is this thing that we're doing right now? And even just making the temple of God is this crazy, amazing thing that people have, uh, that we're doing right now. And it's physical work. Go follow Sunsim around. It's not like he goes to every spot and pray and pray and pray in every tree. He's pruning trees. He's like, you know, uh, transplanting trees. He's transplanting rocks. He's softening, like he's flattening the ground, making irrigation. There's, it, this is all, if you just put these words down as normal words, people are thinking it's really work. Ir, you know, making an irrigation system, flattening the land with red soil, pruning trees, transplanting trees and rocks. When you hear those words, you're not thinking, oh, it's spiritual work. It's, it's physical work. And if you think about that, and that's the pride of providence, we have to understand work is also a, a thing we have to take pride in. The work that we do, the money that we make, supporting our families and, and stuff like this too. So when you look at Sunseem's life, what Sunseem said was, most of it is like so much work to be done and it wasn't all spiritual. There was so much physical laborious work to be done, Right? So much money needed to buy the land. When he talked about buying the land, how do you buy the land if no one's working, but everyone is doing uh, a spiritual work instead, right? He said, instead, if, if, if they only worked on the spiritual things and only gave glory, then you'd still be in the countryside of Wonmingdong, in the grass fields, right? If no one actually worked. 
So, you know, we have to realize how important the work is. The work is supporting the churches. The work is doing so much. And we have to realize to that level. So we know we have to pray, right? You know, pray for those that are doing the work in the temple. Support them in whether it's financially or sending someone off to, to help, with, help, help uh, uh, work on the temple. We have to really be those that uh, go out and make sure that uh, these amazing things happen, right? So, you know, as Sunseem said at the very end, he's like, I'm preparing to meet you, right? I'm preparing to meet you. So many, you know, I'm, I'm building what we're doing, making it better and better. So the next time you see it, you're going to be like, whoa, Sunseem, you really prepared. And I hope that uh, in the same way, we will prepare our hearts, prepare our spirits, prepare ourselves, and prepare new lives uh, for Sunseem to see too. All right, guys, that is the word study for today. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. Uh, that is something I always look forward to. And it, it's really good for me because it, it helps me to keep my mind focused on the word too, especially during this pandemic. All right, guys, so we're going to the song of choice for today. And it is Friday, so it is Musical Friday. And what is Musical Friday? Uh, we pick songs from Broadway musicals, animated musicals from Disney, just anything out there. Today, uh, I'm going to pick a song for uh, this awesome Friday. It's a popular song from the 1964 musical Funny Girl. It's called Don't Rain on My Parade, right? It also There's also a musical version of this, but this song was sung, uh, and it was in the TV show Glee. This is Don't Rain on My Parade. <laughs> Me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. Don't tell me not to fly, I've simply got to. If someone takes a spill, it's me and not you. Who told you you're allowed to rain on my parade? How much of my band out? I didn't fake it, hat, sir. I guess I didn't make it, but whether on the rose of sheer perfection, a freckle on the nose of life's complexion, the cinder or the shiny apple of its eye. I gotta fly once, I gotta try once, only can die once, right, sir? Oh, life is juicy, juicy, and you see, I gotta have my bite, sir. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comma. I simply gotta march, my heart's a drama. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. I'm gonna live and live now. Get what I want, I know how. One roll for the whole shebang. One throw, that bell will go clang. I on the target and wham. One shot, one gunshot. Hey, Mr. Onstein, here I am. I'll march my band out. I'll be in my drum. And if I'm band out, your turn at that, sir. At least I didn't fake it, hat, sir. Guess I didn't make it. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comma. I simply gotta march my heart to drama. No, somebody don't know. Nobody is gonna rain on my There you have it. That is from The Glee. Uh, well, The Glee TV show. Uh, it is Don't Rain On My Parade. And that's a popular song from the 1964 musical Funny Girl. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. And it makes makes your day on this Friday a little bit better. All right, guys. So this is Friday. We're going to go to the last segment. Of course, every single Friday, we do have the MBTI 16 personality segment with One Chan. Welcome back, everyone, to MBTI. This is me, Wan Chun, and today we'll be talking all about the tertiary function. This is the third cognitive function in our stack of four. So, everyone, let's get into it.
Hi, so if you guys are new to MBTI, then you may see these four letters and think, oh, okay, like, cool, part of a club, <laughs> one of 16 of these types, and you get put into this group. Oh, INFP or ESTP or ENTJ or ENFP, like me. And the thing is that that is just the surface of what MBTI is. And th from there, you have to, you know, use that code to figure out your cognitive functions. And from, you know, when we're young, we're developing cognitive function. We're developing the way that we're thinking. And um, in terms of MBTI, as an ENFP, I've got this extroverted intuition. That is my dominant. That is the one that I just kind of, it's my superpower. I use it and I don't even think about it. It's just how I'm gathering in the information. It's a perceiving cognitive function. So I, I, I enjoy the gathering. I'm enjoying this kind of experiencing the world through the lens of intuition. And I see everything in front of me. A sensing type, I see all the information and they just enjoy experiencing it. But I'm experiencing this metaphysical kind of realm. And that's, that's me. And then I have FI introverted feeling as my second, my auxiliary cognitive function. And that's how I f judge based on, like I, I have a strong kind of value system that I able to make decisions based on. And then I have my tertiary function. This is my third function. For me as an ENFP, it's TE, extroverted thinking. And the thing is that as with all, with all of these types, you know, whatever box you fit in, um, it's kind of inconsistent because we have to develop them. And I guess one thing to acknowledge is that from when you're young, uh, it's important to have a healthy approach to that development. And I, I guess we'll talk a little bit more about it as we go. Um, but we, we need to have a good base. Develop one, develop auxiliary function second, and then based on those, that development of them working together, then you fit another one in and you start developing that. And you gotta have this kind of healthy connection and working togetherness. So with the inferior function and tertiary function, them being lower in the stack. So for me, my inferior function is SI, introverted sensing. And then my tertiary, it's TE. They're a little bit lower in the stack. They can often be kind of overtaken by my unconscious mental activity. Or, you know, just in general, I just think, totally forget about it. And I think in terms of what real development is, real development of cognitive functioning means that we learn about it and we start... Um, developing and becoming aware of it and then it, it kind of in, uh, a, kind of <laughs> applying it to who we are and realizing how it is us. This is how we develop <laughs> cognitive functioning, okay? And the problem with this third function, okay, so tertiary function, sometimes, you know, we use it as a psychological defense mechanism because yeah it's a little bit inconsistent at first and you know it can become this kind of wall or you know defense mechanism like i said or it just tries to trick us from really figuring ourselves out or it's like oh that kind of is uncomfortable let's meet let's use tertiary function and you know these are uncomfortable feelings or uncomfortable thoughts or the situation i don't enjoy and just like, get me out of here. And so I use tertiary function. And for me as an ENFP, it might be because I'm not enjoying FI, my auxiliary function. Okay, so, you know, my tertiary function comes in. And it's like, hey, dominant, like, let's just don't worry about FI right now. And let's just forget about it for now. And then, and if I keep doing that, then the problem is, is that I will never really grow myself and I'll become more and more distant from my genuine, authentic self and who I really am. And, you know, what's it really protecting against? The thing is that the, what's it protecting against? It's protecting against 
your second function or your inferior functions. Your inferior functions, sorry. For me, like I said, the tertiary comes in and it's just like, hey, 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 like dominant, don't worry, I got you. And it will just cover up FI. It will cover up SI. Because why? My dominant is extroverted. My tertiary is extroverted. So they're like, okay, like we got this. <laughs> and they'll force out the auxiliary and the inferior functions because yeah, they're a little bit different. They're introverted functions. They're, they take us out of our comfort zone. And so, you know, because they're different, then we don't want to get into it and it's a little uncomfortable. So we create this internal tension within ourselves. We have two extroverted functions and we have two introverted functions. Everyone does. Some may have dominant as introverted, so their third tertiary function is also introverted. And that means that the auxiliary and inferior, so two and four, they're kind of taking people out of their, uh, their comfort zones. And so that's what could be rejected. And they team up. They team up. The dominant teams up with tertiary. And it's like, hey, they're fighting against this threat of discomfort created by the inferior or auxiliary functions. And, you know, that's that, that kind of conflict within yourself. That I mean, you can imagine it as people, right? But that's happening inside yourself. Because you're unable to deal with like the whatever problems that you're dealing with inside. And this is actually called the tertiary loop. Tertiary loop. It's a new term to learn. <laughs> tertiary loop. And so that's when we're in that's when we just focus, we bypass auxiliary and we just use tertiary. And this is a big problem. So the dominant should work really well with our auxiliary function. And then based on that, we also have this kind of help of our tertiary function, but a tertiary loop is bypassing that. And we're just using tertiary and dominant together. Thus, the person <laughs> becomes very extreme in their behavior. And, you know, introverts, they'll become really withdrawn or recluse. And extroverts, they just won't stop moving and they won't, they, they kind of both won't know how to um, stop kind of harming themselves. Basically, the more the auxiliary fails to develop in early stages, the tertiary is more prone to suffering and you get kind of in these tertiary loop situations. And of course, you know, the more you fail to develop it, um, the more problematic it becomes. Now, tertiary loop, it creates this vicious cycle, okay? So starting with the second auxiliary, um, it produces or, you know, it's because of it, it there's too much discomfort or failure. Uh, then, you know, the person becomes more heavily used, like start more to heavily use the tertiary function to avoid those whatever problems or discomfort. And... Then because of that, there's more discomfort and more failure. And through the cycle, the auxiliary problem just kind of grows and grows. And through time and denial, it becomes worse. And then it becomes a habit. And it becomes a defense mechanism. Every time FI wants to say something, it's like, nope, tertiary, uh, I got this. Uh, well, mm, blah, 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 blah. And it just like, overrides it. So... Guys, I hope that you can figure this out um, within yourselves and <laughs> understand about this tertiary loop. Are you guys suffering from this tertiary loop or have you ever experienced it? You guys can, I don't know, drop it in the comments below if you like. And um, having a great week, everyone. And God bless. See you next week. Talk more about MBTI. See you later. Bye-bye. And thank you, Wanchan, for another awesome episode of the MBTI 16 Personalities. He's been doing this almost for an entire year, guys. Give him a round of applause. Great job. I hope that uh, we can continue to have more and more of these amazing segments. All right, guys, that is the last segment, not only for this week, uh, but no, 
what well, uh, it's the opposite i was supposed to say this is that's the last segment not only for today but for this entire week i hope you guys have an amazing and awesome weekend enjoy the espresso with sky video tonight also the sunday edition with andrew chow on sunday and then we'll see you guys again back on monday on the morning star drive on 117.8 it's the morning star drive 117.8 You saw me up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind I'm burning with desire and the passion Nobody can stop me when I'm like this I got my head in the zone, you know I'm on the morning star drive, you know I'm burning with desire and the passion